So I fixed my lactose intolerance by chugging lactose for two weeks. This changed my gut biome, so the bacteria could break down the lactose for me. To be clear, based on the paper I read, I didn't start producing lactase. I got the bacteria to break down the lactose instead. I don't recommend this method because it was pretty extreme. However, I, I keep seeing questions like, why not take probiotics? Why not eat yogurt? How long does the effect last? So now I'm here to make this make sense. If the goal is just to grow bacteria to eat the lactose, why go to such extremes? So your gut is filled with all kinds of tiny microbes. Bacteria, viruses, fungi. The bacteria eat what you eat. So much so that 75% of your poop is bacteria. This cool paper zoomed in on poop and surprise, it's bacteria. The viruses are mostly bacteriophages. They eat the bacteria. We don't really know what the fungi do. There's so much complexity in the way these microbes interact with the food you eat, with each other, even with your brain. The microbes produce their own chemical signals, such as melatonin, serotonin, dopamine, and can use them as weapons. Different kinds of bacteria prefer different kinds of food, and they're all competing with each other. So some will play dirty and exploit those chemical signals as tools to manipulate your brain into craving what they want to eat. This improves their fitness over other bacteria. That's right. The last time you had a craving for a giant slice of chocolate cake, it also might have just been the gut bacteria who were also craving a giant slice of chocolate cake. You can actually influence your gut biome by taking probiotics, prebiotics, and antibiotics. When you take a probiotic, you're eating a specific kind of bacteria and hoping by adding more of them to your system, it'll give them an edge over other kinds of bacteria. Prebiotics are bacteria food. When you eat a prebiotic, you're eating super concentrated food for very specific beneficial microbes to encourage their growth. Antibiotics kill bacteria, usually the source of an infection, but sometimes also the microbes in your gut. That's why doctors sometimes advise you to take antibiotics with probiotics to sort of seed your gut with the kinds of bacteria you want to take over. So back to my lactose experience. Based on the paper I read, I was chugging lactose in the form of powdered milk to grow more bacteria that eat lactose. The lactose was a really concentrated prebiotic, food for the kinds of bacteria I wanted. Now I love kefir and yogurt and have taken probiotics off and on for my IBS, but they never seem to have any effect on my lactose intolerance. Yogurt and kefir, etc., are all mixtures of microbes and their food, probiotics and prebiotics. They contain a ton of bacteria that have been eating the lactose in the milk, fermenting it. But they are more living bacteria than bacteria food by the time you eat it, because much of the lactose has already been consumed. Kefir and yogurt never bothered me nearly as much as ice cream. They have way less lactose. But eating them didn't seem to impact my post-ice cream symptoms. But this literature review says there's a positive relationship between probiotics and lactose tolerance. So what gives? Why do probiotics, kefir and yogurt, help some people but not others? Also, some people pointed out that I didn't have to go 100% in chugging lactose for days straight. I could have ramped up gradually. I actually had tried that, and a slow increase in lactose just means a slow increase in symptoms. But the slower approach also seems to work for some people, so what's going on? And strangest of all, I've been able to consistently tolerate lactose for over four years now, even though I have absolutely stopped chugging lactose. So yeah, what? So the gut biome is clearly a very complex ecosystem. So let's model it as something bigger to try to understand what's going on. Imagine your gut like a national park, like Yellowstone. Life needs an energy source. In a national park, that's sunlight. In your gut, it's whatever food you eat. Now this energy from sunlight flows through the park. The carrots use the sunlight to photosynthesize, the bunnies eat the carrots, the wolves eat the bunnies. Ecosystems have various pressures and feedback loops that keep them in equilibrium. Equilibrium is just a state of balance. A ball on one side of a well is unstable. Gravity will pull it to the bottom, but it may overshoot and it will roll back and forth until it eventually rests at the bottom. In a national park, which we'll say is a closed system, a temporary shift in the energy flow, like a really good sunny spring for carrots, is like the ball being pushed to one side of the well. The boom of carrots will cause way more bunnies to be born, but the next year, too many bunnies and not enough food might cause stress that brings on sickness. You might end up with fewer bunnies than before the carrot boom even happened. But the next year, with fewer bunnies, there are more than enough carrots and their numbers may come back. Equilibrium. Now every national park, or person's gut biome, has a different state of equilibrium, or balance. We'll call that a local minima. 
For example, Yellowstone has a lot of wolves, and the Everglades have a lot of alligators. As long as the changes to the energy going into the system are low enough, the system will recover back to the way it was. So if my gut is Yellowstone, and eating yogurt and probiotics are like airdropping some alligators into the park, sure, right now I have alligators inside me, but they don't have the right conditions to live. So eventually, the alligator population will swing back to the way it was. Low. What I did by chugging lactose was something really extreme. It was enough to push me all the way out of my local minima by changing the energy source that the bacteria had access to. I blotted out the sun of my national park. No more sun, no more plants, no more bunnies, no more wolves. That would be bad, except that maybe the warm geothermal pools attract alligators. By eating so much lactose for so long, I suspect I forced my gut biome to a new local minimum and a new equilibrium. My tolerance has continued just fine since 2020. I do suspect if I stopped eating lactose altogether, those bifida bacteria would die off and I'd end up at another local minimum. The same thing could happen with antibiotics. If eating yogurt or probiotics works for you to bring your lactose tolerance back, it might mean your specific gut biome minimum is very shallow and easy to shift. Same with the ramping up slowly. For me, that looked like hitting the ball back and forth with slightly more energy for a really long time, so it was better just to make a big change and get it over with. Chugging lactose for two weeks worked for me, and this is why I suspect it did. But I'm really looking forward to more research into gut biomes to understand exactly how all of this works. Bonus fermentation fact. Fermentation occurs when microbes convert your food into something new. It's not necessarily alcohol, just whatever byproducts those microbes happen to make. So yes, alcohol is fermented, but so is yogurt, cheese, miso, vinegar, injera, soy sauce, sour cream, dosa, pickles, salami, kimchi. Yep, they're all fermented. It was super valuable as a way to preserve food historically, because something is going to eat your tasty food. You just want to make sure that whatever eats your food is safe for you to eat. 